A quadratic equation has a term with a dominant power of 2. There may or may not be an x term or a constant. One of the techniques for solving a quadratic equation is to use a skill called factoring. In the first example, 6x squared plus 3x, both terms are divisible by a 3 and an x. If you divide the original terms by 3x, what will remain will be 2x plus 1. Once you've completed the factoring and you've broken it down into linear factors, 3x has an understood 1, 3x to the first. Same thing with 2x plus 1, it is now an x to the first term. Set each factor individually equal to 0 and solve for x. In the first factor, 3x, divide both sides by 3, and you get x equals 0. This is one of your solutions. In the second factor, if you subtract 1 from both sides, you get 2x equals negative 1, divide by 2, and that'll take you to x equals negative 1 half. That's the other solution. Quadratic equations usually have two solutions. Now there are times when it's the same solution repeated, like you may get a two both times, but there's still gonna be two answers. Our second example, 64x squared minus 25, this is a difference of two squares and when you run across this special case, you take the square root of your lead term, write that in the leading position twice. You take the square root of the second term, or the constant, and write that twice. And then you alternate a positive and a negative. If you were to foil these two factors back out, the O and the I parts will be negative 40X and a positive 40X, which is zero each other out. Set each factor equal to zero. In this first equation, we're gonna subtract five and divide by eight. In the second factor, We're going to add 5 and divide by 8. Two solutions. In our third example, and we're still solving by factoring, I'm going to bring the 10 over by subtracting 10 on both sides. And with quadratic equations, unless you're solving by completing the square, and we're gonna look at that technique in a minute, you want to get all your terms on one side. Now, if you multiply all the way through by negative one, you can reverse all the signs in the equation, and that's okay to do it. That's totally fine. In fact, it makes it a little easier to factor if your x squared term is positive. Okay, so I'm going to break up x squared into x times x. Now with a trinomial, we have all three terms, a squared, a linear, which is x to the first, and a constant. In these situations, you pick two numbers. They have to add up to the middle value and multiply out to the last value. Two and five will do it. Specifically, negative 2 and a negative 5 will add up to negative 7 and multiply out to a positive 10. If you want to check, feel free. You can foil these two factors together, and you will get the trinomial or three terms above. Set each factor equal to 0. And we will get 2. 
and 5. Those are the two solutions to that equation. In our last example where we're going to use factoring as a solution technique, we also have a trinomial like we did in the previous example, but this one, the x squared term, also has a number attached to it. Uh, 5 is a prime number, so its only factors are 5 and 1. That'll give us a good start in the parentheses. We're just going to put a 5x and a 1x. Let me try to make that look a little better. There we go. Okay, our last number is 8. It has factors of 8 and 1 or 2 and 4. Each pair will multiply back out to 8. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, if I try 1 and 8 here, sometimes you have to use like 2 and 4. The main thing is when you put your numbers in and you decide on whether you want to use positives or negatives, you must be able to foil these back into the three terms right above. I'm going to try a negative and a positive here. Okay, so let's look. FOIL is first times first, 5x times 1x, that's 5x squared. Outside is negative 40x, inside is positive 1x. O and I work together to give you the middle value. Negative 40 plus 1 is in fact negative 39x. And then the last, 1 times negative 8 is negative 8. And that's how you can check to see if you factored correctly. Once you feel good about your factoring, set each factor equal to 0. Subtract 1, divide by 5, and then for the other one, add 8, and we have our two solutions, negative 1 fifth and 8. Another technique you'll be asked to perform in your homework is extracting the square roots. In these problems, you're going to have an x squared and a constant. Because the quadratic equations have two solutions, when you square root both sides, and that's how you eliminate the power of 2, you're going to need to use a positive and a negative sign in front of the radical. That's going to give us positive or negative 13. Why is that? If you multiply a couple 13s together, and they're both positive, what's positive 13 times another positive 13? That's right, 169. Now what if they're both negative? Negative 13 times another negative 13. That's also positive 169. So either one of those two numbers work. Two solutions, they just happen to have opposite signs. Let's try x squared equals 20. The moment you spot an x squared or a squared term equal to a constant, you can go right into extracting the square roots. We square root both sides. Don't forget the plus minus. This is where you preserve the fact that there's two solutions. When you lose your two, you put in a plus minus, and that preserves them. Square root of 20 is not going to be a perfect value because you can't multiply two whole numbers together and get 20. And that's okay. You don't always have to be able to do that. This one is reducible because 20 can be written with a perfect square factor of 4. What's the square root of 4? That's right, 2. So this one has two solutions, but simplified to square root of 5.
one answer, the other answer. Let's do one more extracting square roots. Again, these don't have to always be an x squared equals a number. It's just a squared quantity equal to a number that you look for. The same rule applies. You square root both sides to remove the power of two. Keep in mind you want to preserve two solutions, so that's why the plus minus goes in. Solving for x, we have to subtract 3. Don't move it into the radical part of the problem. Put it in front of the plus minus sign. A radical term like square root of 24 won't combine nicely with an integer. 24 is not a perfect square, but it is reducible with a perfect square factor of 4, 4 times 6. That will let us reduce negative 3 plus or minus 2, and then the 6 stays under the radical. So the two solutions to this problem, and remember there's always going to be two of them. Occasionally they repeat, but there are two of them. Negative 3 plus 2 square root of 6, negative 3 minus 2 square root of 6. In addition to factoring and extracting square roots, there is another technique for solving quadratic equations called completing the square. We're going to do a couple of examples of completing the square. With completing the square, this is the only technique where you keep your variables separated from your constant in the very beginning of the problem. Anything with an x on one side, any constant goes across. All the other techniques, you bring all your terms to one side. Okay, so step one, I'm gonna do this at the bottom. Step one, and none of these steps get wasted, you take half of the number in front of x. Half of six is three. Then you square the value that you just got. Three squared is nine. The second answer will always be a perfect square that value you add to both sides of the equation. Look at the left side of your equation. What two numbers will add up to six and times out to nine? That's right, a couple of threes. A couple of threes, which just so happened to be the first result at the bottom of the page. Half of 6 was 3, 3 squared was 9. 9 completes the square on both sides of your equation, and 3 factors the left side into the same factor twice. Now from the previous slides, we know how to handle this one. We're going to extract the square roots. Take the square root of both sides. Don't forget your plus minus. And then subtract 3, but don't go too far with it. And those are your two solutions. Negative 3 plus square root 3. And negative 3 minus square root 3. Those are the exact solutions. If you're ever asked to approximate, then what you'll do is just simply type them in a calculator and round to whatever accuracy that your homework problem asks. For our final completing the square example, we're going to take 4x squared plus 10x 
minus 16 equals 0. Immediately, I notice all numbers are even, so I'm just going to go ahead and divide them all by 2. Divide everything by 2. Even this is 0. Divide it by 2. If you're asked to complete the square and your x squared term has a leading coefficient that won't go away, then you divide all your terms by that number. So we're going to divide everything by 2. Everything, even the 0. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 0 divided by 2 is still 0. You want to clean off your x squared term where there's an unwritten 1 for a coefficient. That's the idea. Now we're going to go back to the steps we did on the last slide. Step 1, you take half of the number in front of x. So what's half of 5 halves? 5 fourths, very good. Your second step is to square that answer. 5 fourths times another 5 fourths is how much? 25 sixteenths, very good. Now let's go back up to our problem. Remember, the perfect square in red is what you're going to add to both sides. Let me not get too far ahead. I need to move that negative 4 over because with completing the square, you keep your x's on one side, move your constant to the other. Then after you perform your two steps at the bottom of the page, the perfect square in red is what we're going to add to both sides, 25 sixteenths. And then the value in blue is what we're going to use to factor the left side twice. That was 5 fourths. Take your calculator and double check. 5 fourths plus 5 fourths is 10 fourths, which reduces to 5 halves, and that's the middle value. 5 fourths times 5 fourths is 25 sixteenths, and that was the perfect square we added. So this 5 fourths is, in fact, the magic number that allows you to factor the left side of your equation into two identical factors. In this problem, it's x plus 5 fourths, two of those. On the other side of the equation, 4 plus 25 sixteenths, if you take your calculator and add, you're going to want to make sure you get a simplified fraction. Let's see, 4 is 64 over 16, so you could do a common denominator if you liked, but either way you slice it, once it's reduced, 4 plus 25 sixteenths converted to a fraction, 89 sixteenths. 89 sixteenths. All right, let's extract square roots, square root both sides. Uh, to my knowledge, 89 doesn't have any perfect square factors other than one, but that won't lead to a reduction. What it will do is allow you to square root that denominator, though, because 16 comes out to exactly 4 when you square root it, and that's okay. Subtracting 5 fourths, don't subtract too far. And those are the two solutions to the problem. If you wanted to combine, it is totally appropriate, not necessary. You can leave your answer split, type one answer in with the plus sign in the middle, type a second answer in with a negative sign in the middle. I don't think, no, 
I was just checking WebAssign. They do not have a plus minus button. So let me highlight this. You're going to want to use WebAssign, that split up answer for that one. Separate them with a comma. Plus sign for one answer, minus sign for the other. 